Hello, my name is Dylan Fallen, and today I'm going to show you how to install the Khan Academy open source project on your Windows machine so that you can contribute to the project. The first place you'll want to go is the Khan Academy Forge. They have a developer's guide here, and we want to look at getting started because we'd like to start helping develop this open source project. So if you'll click on getting started on the developers page, this will walk you through the steps of installing the open source project on your machine. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here, but this might be good supplementary information. And in case there's any details that I do leave out, you might find the details here on this page. And plus, there's a few specific pieces of code that we'll need to grab uh, from this page as well. The first thing I needed to get on my computer was an SVN software. And the one I found recommended on this document is Tortoise SVN if you're using Windows, so it mentions it right here. Um, and so if you'll search for Tortoise SVN on Google, you'll find the Tortoise SVN page. And if you'll click on Downloads, that'll get you to this page you see here in front of you. And you'll need to either download the 32-bit or the 64-bit version depending on your Windows machine. Uh, the, where you find which version you have, if your Windows machine is 32-bit or 64-bit, is under the Systems icon in the Control Panel. Um, we will eventually need to be accessing that anyway, so when we get to that, I will point out to you where you would see this information. Um, so go ahead and download Tortoise SVN, and if it asks you to, to restart your computer, go ahead and do that. Um, and once that's done, get back to this Khan Academy Forge page, and scroll down till you see this link referring you to the source. So click on the source and that will bring up this page you see here. And the information that we need from this page in use with the Tortoise SVN is just the web address you see here. Just this URL up to this point right here. Do not grab the Khan Academy read only portion of this. Uh, I tried to use that part of it. It doesn't work. You want to leave that off and just up to this part where it says trunk copy that right, um, and, and just have it saved to your clipboard. We'll be using it in just a minute. Once you have that copied, you need to create a folder to store the Khan Academy project. Right? We need to have a place to save it to. And so you can create this folder wherever you'd like. I created, I created the folder here under my documents. Um, I created a test folder for the purpose of the screencast. And within, within this test folder, I'm putting the Khan Academy open source project. Um, so you'll need to create a folder in here. If you're not sure how to create a folder, you just simply right click, go to new, and select folder, and it'll give you the option of naming a new folder. So on the Khan Academy folder, where I'm going to install the Khan Academy open source project, right click on that folder, and you'll get this menu. And on the menu, once you have Tortoise SVN installed, you'll see Tortoise SVN. You don't need to click on it, just highlight it with your mouse, it will give you some options. Select the export option. And you'll get this screen here. What you'll get the first time you access this is a blank input box. And this is where you want to paste in the URL that I just had you copy from the source page. All right, so if you'll paste that in there, leave everything else the same. The export directory should be the folder that you just right clicked from. You might want to confirm that. And then click OK. And when you do this, a lot of good things should happen. You should notice a lot of files being pulled in. And I'm not going to let this process run its course because I don't know how long it's going to take. But just let it run its course until it's done adding all the files that you need for the open source project. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Um, all right. And now if you look in your Khan Academy folder, you'll be pleasantly surprised to see all the files from the open source project. So now you have all the files you need uh, for this open source project, but how do I view the open source project? How do I contribute to it? Well, there's a couple more things that you need to do. Um, the first thing you need to do before I forget is you need to make some adjustments to the configuration file uh, for the open source project. And you can do that again by once you have the open source project files, right click on the Khan Academy folder that you created, go back to Tortoise SVN, and click on settings. And what you'll need to do is click this edit button right here. Um, subversion configuration file, edit that. 
And according to the developer's guide that we have here, we need to make these following changes to the source. Right. Um, and so when you click on this edit button, it will pull up this configuration file and whatever default text editor you have selected for Windows. For me, it's, for, it's Notepad. And you'll need to scroll down quite a ways until you find this enable auto props line and you make sure you look over here to the right a little bit because it's going to have pound signs in front of it. All right, so I'm going to scroll down, scroll down um, uh, quite a ways. Let's see, I might have missed it. Let's see. Um, or maybe I went down too far. Okay, I don't see it. Oh, here it is right here. Okay. And so you, you delete the pound signs that are in front of it. So what it will look like when you initially access this is it'll have a few pound signs, which makes it a comment. Um, and we want to uncomment that so it becomes a live active part of the code. So you delete the comment signs in front of it. Now it's actually part of the configuration file and not just a comment. Um, so we got that set up according to the directions here. And then in addition, what you'll need to do is copy and paste these lines of code. Um, so if you right click, copy and paste it to the bottom of this configuration file which again I've already done um, so what you'll find I think is the last thing you'll see here is this make file underneath that go ahead and paste the the code that you just copied over here and then click save right. so you want to click on save it'll save it right back where you got it from so don't click save as and name it something different or do anything different with that just click save All right and so, um, so that's what you'll want to do alright so once you have that set up correctly. The next step, let's see, uh, let me check my list here. So there's quite a few steps to follow. Um, the next step is that you'll need to install Python. So when I was initially doing this, I was so excited by the progress I was making that I just jumped from here right to this link and I went to install this link and um, I don't have Python on my machine, at least I didn't to begin with. And if you install this first and then realize you need Python and install Python second, it's not going to work. Um, you have to have Python installed to begin with, and if you if you click on this link, uh, not this link, if you um, I don't know, there's some help link that I clicked on that that did tell me uh, that you needed Python first, but I was just getting ahead of myself. So so do a Google search for Python. One of the first couple of results there should bring you to the download page for Python. Click on Python 2.7.1 Windows installer. Again, the version might be different, but at the moment it's 2.7.1. So install that on your Windows machine. Um, Install it in the default location that it that it prompts you to install it in. And for me, it was under the C drive. And so once you have Python installed, you should find you have a folder here, Python 27. Now something we'll want to do to make Python easier to use from our command prompt, which is something we're going to have to do later, you'll need to make Python part of your, I guess it's the universal path. Um, I'm not really sure the technical name for it. Uh, but I'll tell you how to do it. So you need to go to your control panel. Um, and I don't know if I have that up. No, I don't have that up at the moment. So let me grab the control panel right, and go to the systems icon. And if, if it's not set up like this, you might need to select here. Um, if it's under, under category style, I don't really like that myself. It's hard to find things. So you might just want to select icon. And I picked large icons. Go to the system icon. Pull that up. And here's where you would know if you're running a 32-bit or 64-bit. So if you need to check on that, this is where you would check. Um, what we need to do is go to advanced. Let's see, where is advanced at? Advanced system settings. And what you'll need to do is click on environment variables. And under environment variables, you'll see this variable path. And we'll need to edit that to include Python here. All right, uh, so click on edit. And what I found was already in here was the Google stuff from when I installed that Google app engine. But in front of that, or I guess behind it probably would be fine too, you need to type in this bit right here. C colon forward slash Python 27, or whatever the folder name was when you installed Python. Right. Um, and the website I got this information from also recommended having this in front of it. I'm not sure what that does or if that's necessary. but uh, And these need to be semicolon separated. So separate these with semicolons. And that will allow Python to be referred to in a universal way. So no matter what folder you're in, you can refer to Python. It'll know to look um, in this folder. 
when you refer to the Python code. So, so make sure you have that typed in there. It's going to be really useful here in just a minute. All right, and then click OK, click OK, click OK, get out of all that. I'll go ahead and close that. Um, and let's minimize that. All right. So now we have Python on our machine. We have, we have it accessible universally. The next thing we want to do is install the Google App Engine on our machine. And uh, so go ahead and click on that link. And you'll get this page, which looks kind of intimidating to me. But uh, if you just look at the top here for Google App Engine, you'll see the Windows platform. Click on that file there and run it in order to install the Google App Engine on your computer. If I recall, once you have this installed, it will prompt you to restart your computer. So you're going to have to restart um, and, then, and then pull your computer back up. Uh, once you have this installed properly, go ahead and launch that. Uh, program. Maybe you don't have to restart it now that I'm thinking about it. It might let you just launch it straight from that. So if it doesn't prompt you to restart, then don't restart. Um, but you want to go ahead and you know launch this program once you have it installed. And once you launch it, it's going to look like this. Except that what you'll have is a blank, a blank screen here. Nothing will be listed here. Um, so you'll need to add the Khan Academy Open Source Project to your list of uh, apps. And to do that, you just click on File. Click on Add Existing Application, and in this input box, you'll need to have the, the path to the Khan Academy open source project on your computer. So if you remember where you installed it, you could probably just type it right in here, but I, I find it easier just to browse for it. So we'll click on uh, my username, uh, my documents, and our test folder, and under the test folder I have the Khan Academy open source project. So I click OK, and that populates it with the correct path. Make sure the port is 8080. It's giving me 8081 because I'm already using 8080. So make sure you do that. I'm not going to actually add this because, again, I'm, I'm not going to use this. But once you add it, you should have something that looks exactly like this. And once you have this set up, go ahead and highlight that and click Run. While that's doing that, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the command prompt because the next place you'll want to go is to your command prompt, which is found under the accessories folder on Windows. And when you start the command prompt, you won't have all this stuff you see here. What you'll have is um, just this part here. You'll have this, um, uh, I don't know, path. All right, so you're starting, what this is telling you is that you're starting in defallen folder. And what we'll need to do is access the folders to get to our Khan Academy project open source project. So if you remember where you installed it, you'll need to remember this. You'll have to go through folder by folder to get to the Khan Academy open source project. We installed it under my documents, which it, on this machine, if you look at the actual um, folder name, it's just documents with a capital D. And the way you access that folder is you type in CD space, whatever the folder name is. Right. Um, and then under the documents, we uh, so if I can't remember the folder name, which I'm having a little trouble remembering, you just type in DIR, it'll list all the files in that folder. And anything with a DIR in front of it is another folder. So this is the folder that we put the Khan Academy open source project in. So CD space my docs test. Right? And then again, if I can't remember the name of the files in there, I'll click DIR, I'll type DIR. I don't know why I said click. And then and then the Khan Academy open source project is under this the KA folder. Right? Um, and so now we are in the um, open source project what we'll need to do while this is running so notice it's running now just leave it running minimize this uh, go back to the developers page and scroll down and we'll have to type in these two lines of code I do it one at a time so the first one is CD space sample underscore data that's just getting you into the sample data folder right? and then you'll need to run this line of code and this is where it's important that we had Python as a universal uh, path um, Type in python sample space data dot py upload. Now, when I type just that in, it didn't work for me because I don't have the Google file necessary in the universal path, and I couldn't figure out how to do it. So what you have to do is type in dash a, and then the path of the Google file. The path of the Google file I'm referring to, uh, the Google file I'm referring to, I should say, is app cfg, which should have installed wherever the Google App Engine installed. So find out what that path is. Type it in here, and if the path has any spaces in it, you'll definitely need to use quotes around it. Otherwise, the command prompt won't be able to handle that. Um, so you hit enter on that. It'll install some sample data. And once that's done, it's going to take a little while, but once that's done, go back to your Google App Engine program 
and click browse and you should find that the Khan Academy